everyone, welcome back to Demetra's Dishes. So today's recipe is holiday table worthy, but it's also perfect for a busy weeknight. It's a delicious weeknight meal. I've combined stuffed shells and pastizio, and I put them together to bring to you my pastizio style stuffed shells. If you like pastizio, you're gonna love this, especially because it's a much lighter version of it. The components are all pretty much the same, except for instead of the long tubular pasta or the penne pasta, we're gonna be using stuff, um, shells that I've boiled. So over here I have a pack of shells that I bought. I've just cooked them in boiling water for about 10 minutes, seasoned with a little bit of salt, and I just strained them, and then I rinsed them with cold water so that way it could stop the cooking process. We're gonna put that aside. You're also gonna need some of my basic meat sauce. Now I've done a separate video on this, but really it's very easy to do. All I did was I combined onion, chopped onion, and some garlic cloves, cloves in a pot with some olive oil, cooked them for about 10-15 minutes until they were soft and tender. I added some ground lean beef to it, along with the seasonings, which are just salt, black pepper, some oregano, a, he a hefty pinch of crushed red pepper flakes, because I like it, you can leave it out, and then some canned tomato sauce that I pureed. They're just basic canned tomatoes that I pureed, and I cooked it for about 20 to 25 minutes until it was nice and thick, and then this tomato, this beef, then this meat sauce is ready. We're just gonna wait for it to cool down a bit. Now, as we're waiting on that, we're gonna make the bechamel sauce. So everybody knows the creamy, savory custard that's on top of pastizio and moussaka. It's known as bechamel sauce. It's a creamy white sauce that's very easy to make. In my pot over here, I'm gonna add some olive oil and some all-purpose flour. And I'm just gonna cook the two until they thicken up and the um, flour toasts a bit to get rid of that raw flour taste. It just takes a couple of minutes. And you could do this with a wooden spoon or with a whisk. So once you smell that flour ha release that beautiful toasted aroma, we're gonna add some hot milk. Now this is just some whole milk that I've warmed through so that way the bechamel sauce cooks a little faster. And then we're gonna season this with a little bit of salt, pepper, and a tiny pinch of nutmeg, ground nutmeg. Classic flavorings. And we're just gonna cook it through until it thickens. And that happens very fast, as you can see. Once it thickens, you wanna immediately take it off of the heat, whisk it well, and taste it, and see if you need to add a little bit more salt, you know, for the seasoning. Now, in my mixing bowl over here, I have some eggs, whole eggs and egg yolks. I'm gonna give them a whisk, and then I'm gonna add some of this custard to the eggs. So that way it can raise their temperature. It's also known as tempering the eggs. So that way when we add the eggs in here, they won't uh, scramble. All you need is a little bit. Once the mixture is nice and smooth, and it is, we're just gonna add it and just whisk it all together until it's combined. And to that, we're gonna add some shredded Parmesan cheese. And I think I'm gonna mix it with I don't like to mix cheese in with the whisk. It kind of gets stuck in between um, the whisk and it's hard to get out. So I'm just gonna use a wooden spatula. And just like that, the bechamel sauce, the final component is ready. So I forgot to mention that I also added some chopped parsley to my meat sauce once it was cooked. You can add chopped parsley, you could do basil. You could even sneak in some vegetables if you want. If you wanna sneak in, put in some spinach or some baby kale leaves, that's a great addition to add to up the nutritional factor to this recipe. So now I have a baking dish over here. This is an oval baking dish that's probably not easy to find, but any baking dish you have, a nine by 13 inch baking dish, a lasagna pan, any of those will do. We're gonna uh, layer just a little bit of tomato sauce, and this is just plain pasta sauce straight out of the jar. You can make your own if you want to, but you're just gonna wanna put just a, a bed of it on the bottom so that way your shells can sit on. Now we're gonna take one shell at a time, and I'm using these jumbo shells. I like them so that way they hold the maximum amount of filling. I'm gonna fill them with about a tablespoon to a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half, or until they're full, with this delicious, hearty meat sauce. And I'm gonna arrange them over the sauce, side by side, pretty snug together, so I can fit as many as possible. 
So I have 21 shells in this pan that fit. The rest I'm gonna save and I'm gonna fill these later. Now we're gonna top with our bechamel sauce and it's totally up to you how creamy and how cheesy you want this to be. If you want to, you can top the whole thing with bechamel sauce, but I like to keep it a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna go down the center of all of my shells, exposing some of them, just like that. I'm gonna leave this for the next pot that I'm gonna make, the next pan. Last and final step, we're gonna sprinkle some shredded mozzarella. You can use your favorite cheese. Anything that melts beautifully you can use, but I love the way mozzarella is nice and mild and doesn't take away from the flavors in this dish. Lastly, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of dried oregano on this. You could do basil or even fresh parsley. Now you can do two things with this. You can take this tray as it is, wrap it up with plastic wrap and aluminum foil and, and stick it in your freezer and have it ready to bake whenever you're in a crunch for time and you don't want to, you don't have time to really prepare a meal. You just take it out of the freezer. You could defrost it overnight in your refrigerator and then bake it just the way we're going to bake it now. Or if you're like me and you're really hungry and you have hungry mouths waiting, you're going to pop it in your oven. My oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to cover this with foil and I'm going to bake it for 30 minutes. Then I'm going to uncover it and I'm just going to turn my broiler element on, keeping a close eye on it. So that way the top, the cheese, it's already going to be melted, but it's going to get a nice golden color all on top. And as soon as it's ready, it's going to come out and I'm going to show you what it looks like. So my stuffed shells came out of the oven. They took 30 minutes to bake, covered in foil in the center of the oven. Then I went and took the foil out and I set my oven to broil and I left the tray on the middle rack so that way it doesn't burn. And I just let the heat from the broiler kind of crisp up the top and brown it a little bit. And that takes anywhere between five to seven minutes. You want to make sure you stay on top of it so you don't step away and you know have them burn on you but they are del they're just looking delicious the house is smelling amazing let me show you what they look like let me put my oven mitt on because it's burning hot just look at how gorgeous they look how cheesy how ooey and gooey they are now before I take one out to taste um, I have I had all the leftover pasta that we had boiled the pasta shells and the meat sauce and the bechamel and all that. I just combined them in this small baking tray. This is gonna go in my freezer for those busy days when I don't have time to cook. Now, the way I like to uh, do it, I like to thaw it out overnight, but if I don't get a chance to do that, like say you forget, you wanna put it in your oven while your oven is preheating and cook it. If it's frozen, you wanna give it at least 15, 20 extra minutes. Keep an eye on it once it's bubbly and the cheese is melted then you know it's done to, to do the broiler thing. If you have a foil tray, then you don't really have to worry about putting in there to warm up while the oven is warming. It's just that whenever I put a ceramic tray that comes out of the freezer, a ceramic baking dish actually, you just wanna be careful that it doesn't burst or break or crack on you. So that's why I put it in there and let it warm through while the oven is preheating. But enough about that, let's take out some stuffed shells. They're still super duper hot. And I do recommend that you let them cool a good 15, 20 minutes before you serve them. Just because, um, first of all, you don't want to burn yourself. Second, they'll come out easier and they won't fall apart. Mine held up pretty well, if you ask me. But just to be on the safe side. Now, I went light with a base layer of tomato sauce just because I didn't want to go put, put too much. Some people like for them to be almost drowning in the sauce. That's fine. You can put more sauce if you like. But give it a try my way first and then see how it goes. I really don't think I should go in and taste this, but what the heck, I'll take one for the team. <laughs> Perfect. Creamy, cheesy, meaty, hearty. The pasta, the stuffed shells are cooked just right. Try not to overboil them, you guys. Pasta is best al dente. Super light. Pasticcio is delicious, you guys. If you want another version of it, go on to my website, www.dimitrosdishes.com. Make this. It's also in the description box, the recipe down below underneath this video. Share pictures with me on social media. Subscribe if you haven't because there are so many more recipes where this came from. They're gonna all be delicious. It's the holiday season and you're gonna want to, and you're not gonna want to miss them. Also hit that notification bell. Thank you guys for spending time with me today and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.